Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 51 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jadicat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. Last time, I was working on some quests, and I'm working my way up towards making some Certus Bees. I've still got my Monastic Bees and my Modest Bees processing through, and I'll get back to those sometime soon. However, first, I wanted to get into the aesthetic plans that I've had. I've been talking about for a couple episodes now how I want to do an aesthetic episode a little bit differently, and this is going to be less of an episode on aesthetics and more of a segment. Trying something new and a little experimental here, so check it out, tell me what you think in the comments. Quick word of warning, Minecraftians, you can see the finished product of my little attempt at a cool aesthetic thing in front of me. I tried to do a bit of a time lapse. Unfortunately, because of my graphics render settings, specifically OpenGL on, um, things get a little bit weird. So if you happen to be sensitive to rapidly flashy changingness, you might want to look away for the next 90 seconds. I'm still going to show the time lapse because I'm sure that some of you will very much want to see it. However, it did not come out as well as I wanted it to. And if the bits of the world flashing in and out of focus and loading and unloading around the project are going to severely bother you, then look away, skip ahead 90 seconds, and save yourself some nausea. All right, here it comes. So there's my first attempt at a time-lapse build. There'll be more in the future when hopefully I'll have a better handle on the software that I use to make that happen, and things will be a little less derpy. Now, I plan on doing some more bees today. Specifically, I want to get the quantum bees going. You'll notice I've got some of the items that I'm going to be using in, for that in my inventory. The reason I want those quantum bees is for Certus combs. The problem is to make quantum bees I need to use the, oh, where did they go? They're all the way down the line. Austere, which come from frugal, which come from fiendish and modest. And fetus, fiendish come from sinister and cultivated. And the sinisters come from modest with cultivated. The issue being the sinisters, which I got a couple of episodes ago, they have a nasty negative effect on them, as well as a couple of other issues that will slow everything down. So before I get into any extensive bee breeding, and making quantum bees is a rather extensive bee breeding chain, I am going to get into some serious genetic manipulation of my bees. To start that, you've seen me complete the Bees and Trees quest genetic control to get the sampler and the imprinter and start making my first few genetic samples and genetic templates. Now, the next step on that path is going to be tracking down the best genes of each type. The easiest way to do that is actually to look up the serums from extra bees. If I take a look at serum in NEI, well, there's a whole bunch of them and I can see like there's species serums and there's effect serums and there are well let's see do 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 there should be temperature serums and fertility serums and all of that so if i do a search on temperature and take a look well i'm going to want 
well, let's see, there's down three, there's both three, there's up one and two. I'm probably going to want the temperature tolerant both three. And to get that gene, I need doctoral bees. Well, okay, so that's temperature. I'm also going to want, well, you know what? There's a whole lot of genes. Let's take a look at exactly what we need. If I take a look at a template, let me craft that up real quick. Oh, I need to add some sort of sample to it. Hang on just a second. Let me grab what I need for this to continue the demonstration. All right, if I take a look at a template which has fertility four on it, and I can see it has one out of 13 chromosomes. And if I hold shift, I can get even more information. So there are chromosomes for species, speed, lifespan, temperature tolerance, day, night, etc., etc., etc. And I can see where I need to get all of those from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself the bees that I need to get those, and then I'm going to show you those bees and how they were made uh, on screen. I figure you guys have seen me use the advanced mutatron a good bit by this point. You probably don't need a further uh, example of exactly how to use it. I mean, it's pretty simple. You put the two bees in, you select the output, and you get the output. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show you all of the bees that you're going to need to get a perfect breeding template, and then I'm going to show you what you can do with that template. Back soon. Now, first step on the path to ultimate bee perfection. Well, one, make a thaumium scoop. I don't remember if I showed this in the last episode or not, so I'm going to show it on screen real quick. That's just a couple of thaumium ingots, four sticks, a bit of wool, and an arcane workbench with two ordo. And then you toss that into your enchanter, and you get a repair two thaumium scoop out of it. Basically guaranteed if you put 30 levels into it. There aren't very many things that can come out of a thaumium scoop other than repair. Now, I'm going to take a whole bunch of my scented artificial hives, which are made, if you don't remember, by create, crafting the artificial hay, hive from hay bale and silk mesh and dunking it into a barrel full of seed oil. And I'm going to take these down here into the little alcove that I've built underneath my tree, which I'm doing terrible at because I don't have a flight potion ready at the moment. There we are, into place. Now. To make hives out of my artificial hives, all I need to do, once they're scented, is place them into the world with the proper spawning conditions around them, and then have a little bit of patience. I'm not very good with the patience, but it is kind of required. The bees that I'm looking for right now are rocky bees, and they will spawn in any biome as long as the hives cannot see the sky. There has to be a something between the hive and the sky, and they're surrounded by a lot of stone. Unfortunately, they have a very low percent chance of spawning, so no matter where you put them, you might need to do a few cycles, and you're going to want to lay down an awful lot of hives to make it happen. Also, I am looking for some form of magic bee or another, which I'm going to use my area up here in my little lab to do for the moment. I've got a little path to the sky. These need any form of regular flowers around them, and you, they need to be able to see the sky to be able to have a chance of working. Now, I'm not 100% cer certain if I'm fulfilling the requirements on any other type of bee in this little alcove, but I do know that I can get unusual bees. And once I have the bees that I need, I'll be right back to show you that what the hives look like after they're done processing. So, as I was getting my bees set up, I noticed a little tiny bit of server lag, and when I did a little check on COFH TPS, I find that my nether is lagging significantly. So, we're going to pop over to the quarry and take a look at what's going on. I imagine that this will be a slow process. Alright, well, quarry's still there. Lots of dirt there as well. And I hear explosions already. So there are massive amounts of the hellfish here from the quarry clearing things out. Which, you know, that... Oh! Massive does not even begin to cover it. So we're going to do what one does when there are tons and tons and tons of monsters, and we're going to run away and wait for them to despawn. They were not despawning because I was not in the nether. And... Hopefully, if I give this just a little bit of time, they will, for the most part, fade out. 
And then I can fly back over here. The fact that there's a newly spawned pack of Pikmin there, and looking at my server panel, the CPU usage has dropped down to a third of what it was. Both good signs. Collecting lots and lots of dirt from nearby. So, that seems to have solved that problem. We had to come back and check on the quarry at some point. It may as well have been now. I don't know why those ghost wood trees are flashing. I think it's just an issue with nature. I don't have Optifine or anything installed, which usually causes those issues. Hmm. Alright. Things seem to be working a lot better now. Let's see if I can punch some dirt. Yep, that worked out. Let's check the TPS. Fantastic. Everything's running smoothly again. Not perfectly, but smoothly. So, if you run into a situation where your server is lagging for strange reasons and you can't tell why, step one on diagnostics can be to use slash COFH space TPS. Oh, hello. And take a look at exactly where you are getting the lag. So if I scroll up, you can see that my initial checks showed my overall to be terrible. Go away. There we go. My overall to be rather terrible, my overworld to be fine, and the end to be fine. But the nether was at 3.81 TPS per second. And that was, you know, the first check of I should go check here. You can use Opus for a much more clear look, but you have to be a server operator to do that. So this is something that anyone can do, is just take a look and see, oh, this is the dimension that is lagging, let's go see why, and see if there's anything that we can do to clear it out. Now, I'm going to head back home and show you some bees. Alright folks, we're back in our little alcove down here, and you can see that out of the 20 hives that I placed, two of them became rock hives. So I'm going to scoop those up with my scoop, and now I have a two pristine rocky princesses and only the one rocky drone and i'm gonna grab my hives up you know what i'll come back for those i'll take a little bit no sense doing that on camera i'm gonna head back upstairs into my tree house or my tree lab my tree labiatory and i have two unusual hives out of the oh three by five fifteen that i put down and one pristine, one ignoble. So I'm not keeping ignoble princesses that I get because creating more artificial scented artificial hives to get more bees, while slightly time consuming, is just it's not very difficult. I have the seed oil production set up again in my basement. So ignoble princesses get melted down into in the resident um, in the what is this thing called again? DNA extractor into liquid DNA. And you can see that after I've done everything, I have well over 100 buckets of that stuff at this point, so I could easily finish those quests. Now, why did I want Rocky and Unusual Princesses? Well, let me grab the finished products and show you why I was looking for these in particular. Okay, so the reason I wanted Rocky was to get the robust princess and I wanted robust for a number of reasons. If I take a look at the genetics on this robust princess I can see that it has diurnal, nocturnal, flyer, and cave all true and it also comes with humidity tolerance both two. So that's basically almost everything that I want from the second page. There are five good genes on the robust princess. To get robust princesses I need to combine a tolerant with a rocky princess and to get tolerant I need to combine a diligent with a rocky. So I start with the diligent bees I already had, breed them with Rocky, which creates tolerant, and then I use the tolerant with the Rocky that I already had to create the robust. And it is in your best interest to make sure that you save a, a princess and drone of every type along the way. If I take a look at tolerant, well, I have a tolerant princess in here. Two of them, in fact. This right here, is the advanced filing cabinet from Extra Utilities. It is an even better bee storage than the indexer by leaps and bounds. It will store as many princesses as I can put into it. It will store 
items that do not stack and it will store them without limit. And if they're exactly the same, for example, some of the unusual and tropical princesses that I have in there are in fact exactly the same, it will appear to stack inside of it. So if you need to store your princesses, extra utilities, advanced filing cabinet. The other great thing, you can pick it up, take it with you, set it down, and access all of those items still. It's also a great place to stuff your equipment if you have extra equipment that won't stack. Filing cabinet. Okay. Where was I? Uh, that covers robust princesses. So if I take a look at my genetic template, that covers the... Uh, there's no good way for me to mouse over that. But anyway, this covers the terror, uh, the not care, the cave dwelling tolerant flyer humidity tolerance ignores day night. So that's well one two three four of them. The fertility is covered by majestic. These bees naturally have fertility four, which is the highest. So grab those, and you're already at five out of thirteen. Yes, doctoral covers temperature tolerance. And to get doctoral, you need to combine timely with lordly, because, of course, the doctor's a time lord. To get lordly, you need timely with imperial. We've already seen how to get imperial bees, so now we need to focus on getting our timely bees. Timely come from imperial with ethereal. Okay, well, so we need to focus on getting ethereal drones, which come from arcane and supernatural. And this is where it gets tricky. Supernatural bees are made by combining charmed with enchanted, Enchanted is charmed with Eldritch, and charmed is Eldritch with cultivated. Eldritched is cultivated with attuned, mystical, sorceress, or unusual. So, I got the unusual bees to create the Eldritch bees, to create the charmed bees, to create the enchanted bees, to create the supernatural bees, to create the ethereal bees. Now, ethereal also needed arcane. To create arcane bees, I need mysterious and esoteric. To make mysterious, I need esoteric with eldritch. And to make esoteric, I need eldritch with cultivated. So it all comes back to these eldritched drones, or these eldritched bees. And to get the eldritch bees, as I mentioned, you combine your unusual with cultivated. And then, just to demonstrate why the advanced mutatron is so great... If I grab a cultivated princess and an eldritch drone, and I toss them in there together, well, I need both esoteric and charmed. Normally, under standard bee breeding protocol, if I were to combine the eldritch drone with a cultivated princess, I would have a 10% chance of getting esoteric and a 10% chance of getting charmed, and an 80% chance of not getting anything, and they just mix. So this has, Advanced Mutatron, saved me a ton of time. An absolute bonkers amount of effort and time was shaved off of this whole process in that way. So the doctoral bees, they gave me mostly the temperature tolerance 3. That is where doctoral bees come in play because they are the only source of that temperature tolerance both three which is a fantastic gene and will allow anything in the game any bee that current exists to be able to function in a normal temperate biome some a nether bee a, or a, an arctic bee can both easily exist in a standard forest or magical forest or jungle or something like that biome with the temperature tolerance both three now the other B that was very important to get, let me see, what were the other, so, oh, that was the other thing that the doctor did for me. It brings lifespan longest, because it's a time lord. Of course it has the longest lifespan. The doctor is thousands and thousands of years old. I like to have lifespan longest on my bees, specifically for my production bees. I have two different templates that I end up using, and I'll go over those in a moment. The production bees get the shortest lifespan, which you can find on, I believe, Cultivated of all things. Uh, yes, shortest lifespan on Cultivated. And bees, that, so that's where, where my breeding bees go. They get the shortest lifespan because I want to produce a lot of drones and I want to move along, get past that species and on to the next. Bees that I'm going to have in production for a long period of time that I want the resources from, they get the longest lifespan so that I don't have to worry about them building up a ton of extra drones or flooding my system with extra princesses or anything like that. Now, so that covers cave, 
flyer, nocturnal, diurnal, humidity tolerance, temperature tolerance, lifespan, and fertility. The only thing left are speed, pollination, flowers, effect, and area. Well, effect, you can just strip, off, strip the effect none off of cultivated. None of the beneficial effects are particularly worthwhile in my opinion, and all of the negative effects are something that I would rather not have. There are a couple of bees that you breed specifically for the negative effect. For example, the ghastly princess will literally produce ghasts around it. I can also produce gas tears. So I guess you could breed that out. You could remove the effect if you didn't want to have to have a build a gas farm around your ghastly princess hive. In any case, I use effect none because that way I don't have to worry about it. So you can pull that off of your cultivated princess, no problem. Flowers, I like to be able to use the roses and the Minecraft vanilla flowers because one, I get more dye that way. Two, I think that uh, the place looks pretty when it's covered in flowers like that. And three, I don't have to worry about any exotic materials being placed where my bees can get at them. So both of those can come off. That, that gives you three potentials off of your cultivated species. That leaves speed, pollination, and area. And all of those, you can get the maximum from the air princess. Now the air princess is pretty fantastic because they can produce air shards. If I show you every bee tech, they have a 5% chance of producing air shards and that gets multiplied by production values from either your frames if using an alviary or your um, production upgrades if using an industrial apiary from Gendistry. To make the air princess, you normally need to combine two windy princesses well, I mean, a windy princess and a windy drone in a special infusion recipe through magic bees, which I haven't actually unlocked that infusion recipe just yet I, because I didn't need it. Instead, I was able to take my windy, always keep an extra princess of every species, at least that's my approach, especially now since you can go through and make an extra princess so easily. Being able to put the Windy Princess with the Windy Drone into the Advanced Mutatron with no other help and get the Air Queen, that is pretty cheaty. Honestly, that that feels pretty OP to me because I've made these Air Princesses in standard packs without Gendistry. And let me tell you, it was a struggle to get them set up properly. So I'm pretty fantastically happy at that. And what the Air Princess gets me is natural access to pollination maximum speed fastest and area 15 by 13 by 15. so those are the final three uh genes that you need and then all you need to do is breed a bunch of princesses of every type that you're looking for the genes for and run them all through the genetic sampler to get the genes that you need i've got some sinister gene uh, bees in here that i was using to demonstrate that particular thing and then decided against uh and remember, if you have extra genes that you don't need, you can toss them into your furnace, which will burn them back into blank genetic samples. And if you have your furnace set to output into your genetic sampler, there you go. So, if I take a look at my completed samples, one of them I have lifespan, shortest, speed, fastest, fertility, four, temperature tolerance, both three, Ignore day night, true. Humidity tolerance, both two. Tolerant flyer, true. Cave dweller, true. Flowers, flowers. Flowering, maximum. Territory, largest, effect, none. And my second template for production is exactly the same except lifespan longest. So, a whole bunch of breeding and manipulating bees and changing around genetics so that I would have the perfect bees. And now I have them. Next step is to take these sinister princesses that have uh, sinister bees that have been producing a whole lot of extra princesses for me so I can actually burn through three of them with no trouble that guy's noisy so I can burn through these three with no wow still all right buddy good go away stay away no okay I don't know where that gag came from even. I really need to sort out my mob issue. But now that I have the uh, 
blood magic armor, I just stopped caring because I didn't have to anymore. I just really want that noise to stop. Huh. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. So, moving along. Uh, in my quest for quantum bees, I'm going to take that sinister princess. Oh, where's the recipe? I need spectral, ender, hermetic, hermetic, monastic, secluded, is monastic and austere, frugal. There. To make fiendish is the sinister with a cultivated. Good. That was a lot of steps to go through to find it. But luckily, I have plenty of extra cultivated. So I'm just going to turn all three of these sinister princesses into fiendish queens. And I'm going to show you how I can make that a safe process. So if I combine my sinister princess with a cultivated drone, I get a fiendish queen. Do it a few times because I have the extra queens. I mean the extra bees. And if I take a look at my Fiendish Queen, I can see Effect Aggressive. That doesn't sound very pleasant. It's not something that I really want. Also, it requires all of these special flowers, and it has a fairly low fertility, and its temperature tolerance won't even allow it to survive in this area. So, I'm going to take that queen, and I'm going to stuff it into my genetic imprinter with my shortest lifespan template, and that's going to imprint the queen. But it's not going to perfectly imprint the queen. It will only imprint the left-hand side, the active alleles. But that's not a problem, because all I need to do is take that queen, once it's been imprinted once, and run it through one of my apiaries with an oblivion frame. If you do not have an apiary with oblivion frames, you can run it through your industrial apiary with the four lifespan upgrades. This will just go slightly faster. And once it processes, oh, let me show you. I can see that it, you know, doesn't have all of those nasty effects and it will give me a whole bunch of extra drones and everything, which is fantastic because having extras is useful. So once it ticks through, I'll be able to show you that it doesn't perfectly imprint the Fiendish Queen. It'll only imprint the princess half of it, I'm sorry, not the left-hand side. So it'll have a 50-50 chance of getting of each offspring having the proper genes or having the standard default genes. The important part is that this generation will not have any negative nasty effects on it. So I don't have to worry about getting hurt by my nether bees running through here. So I grab out all of my, huh, I got an extra princess out of that. That's actually pretty awesome. That, that is simply fantastic. All right, I'm going to grab my automation upgrade out of here and stop the process because I have a ton of sinister bees now. All right, so if I look at the fiendish princesses that got produced, you can see that they both have slightly different genes that are bouncing all over the place. No problem. All I'm going to do is I'm going to run the princess and one of the drones through the genetic imprinter. And I'm going to set that princess and this drone to produce a whole bunch more fiendish drones and uh, potentially more fiendish princesses for me. The other fiendish princesses that I get out of this, I'm going to use to progress my genetics. So there you have it. That's the basic way that I am hyper speeding my bees and moving through the different species and the different options at um, just a ridiculous pace compared to standard. I'll come back once I have my quantum bees figured out and show you once again the full uh, effect chain that gets you to them. After a fair bit of breeding, here they are, the quantum princess and quantum drone, all set up with the proper template. Also, I started tearing up my gendistry area. I'm going to transplant everything into the little tree over there before I release a world download. There will be a world download coming with this episode. It might not be up immediately, and I will link it in the next episode as well. Now, quantum bees are one of the more complex bee species available. In fact, probably one of the most complex ones I've ever made. To get quantum, you need spatial and spectral, and these actually come from different lines. Spectral bees are hermetic and ender, and if you remember, we received ender bees from completing this quest over here. The work harder quest. We received both ender and monastic bees. And those are the key components to quantum bees. So, 
There's your spectral is Ender and Hermetic. To make the Hermetic, you need a secluded with a monastic. To get the secluded, you need an austere with a monastic. And the monastic is the base species that we received from the quest. The austere requires combining a frugal with a modest, modest being the based desert species, which we have plenty of from questing and getting not modest hives. The frugal requires fiendish or sinister with modest. To get fiendish or sinister, well, the fiendish requires sinister with cultivated. The sinister requires a modest bee with a cultivated bee. So it all comes back down to the modest, the monastic, and the ender bees. Modest getting you your sinister, which gets you your frugal, which gets you your secluded, etc., 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 all the way back on up the chain to the quantum. Now, the spatial princess comes from abnormal with hermetic. We've already seen how to get the hermetic. Abnormal comes from secluded and ender, and we've already seen how to get those two. So, it all comes back down to modest, ender, and monastic as your base species. Once you have those three, you can create quantum bees. So, why did I want quantum? Well, I wanted quantum because they produce mellow combs, which when centrifuged will give me nether quartz, as well as honeydew and beeswax. They also produce shimmering combs, which when centrifuge will produce that ender pearl dust. That's only really useful for one thing, eh, so no big deal. However, they also produce certus combs, which when centrifuged give me certus quartz dust and more nether quartz. So I'll have a whole bunch of both nether quartz and certus quartz coming in from these guys. And let me give you a quick demonstration of exactly what I mean by how much if I run these two through. And you can see that they have the longest lifespan attached because these are going to be a final destination production bee. I also grabbed some demonic bees along the way. Demonic bees are cool because they produce glowstone as one of their potential effects. If I give you a look at them, they have a 15% chance of glowstone and they produce simmering combs, which are useful for the phosphor and the refractory wax. Phosphor can be squeezed into lava, refractory wax can be made into refractory capsules. So, you know, not the most useful thing in the world, but still pretty neat. So if I toss my quantum princess with the quantum drone in there, and this is with the eight production upgrades, I can see that my production modifier is 731%. That means that basically every tick it should be producing, well, every B tick, it will likely be producing one of each of the combs that it can produce, which is just fantastic. I will be getting lots and lots and lots and lots of quartz. So, as I said, I'm going to get everything set up into that tree, and I'm going to get this world ready for download. All of my inventory, as usual, will be in the inventory chest, and all of this cool armor, I'm going to put in that armor stand. Sadly, that means that the uh, awesome glasses are going to have to go somewhere else. But that's okay. We'll find. I'll probably go hang those on an item rack or something over next to the enchanting area. So that's going to be the old time that we have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and that you're enjoying the series thus far. Uh, the little attempt at a time lapse, I will do better at that in the future. Sorry, first attempt, and I couldn't really go back and do a do-over once I noticed what was going on because at that point I already had the whole thing built. So, if you are enjoying things, please leave a thumbs up and a comment telling me why. If you are not enjoying things, please leave a thumbs down and a comment telling me what I'm doing wrong. And I will see you next time.